Hello guys, how are you? I thought I'd put together a couple of videos to pretty much bring together everything that uh, we've spoken about in terms of 1984 and per perhaps covering a couple more other um, topics, ideas and other things, for example, genre um, that perhaps we didn't have enough time to cover. Uh, so I thought, well, during the holidays, why not put together a couple of videos for you guys? So I thought I'd, I'd um, get started with uh, looking at 1984 and its form. Um, now we have spoken about the fact that um, 1984 is a dystopia, uh, can be called a dystopia, but uh, it actually has other characteristics. And uh, traditionally, uh, one of those genres is called the scientific romance. So I'm going to explore a couple of tropes or characteristics of this genre to help you um, navigate some of the complexities of 1984 and above all to focus on what drives um, the plot and that is the development of our central character, um, Winston. Okay, so... Um, if I can advance these slides. Okay, so um, we've spoken about some of the characteristics of a dystopian genre, um, and I've just listed them here. Um, so um, I'm not gonna read them all, but uh, we've been uh, weaving in and out um, of our discussions uh, in terms of 1984, and seeing how these uh, tropes really get um, explored um, and um, in terms of the plot, but I thought I'd uh, put them here. And one of the things we've been speaking about the most is hope, which is one of the drivers of the plot. Um, and also the love connection, which can be real or platonic, uh, which helps the protagonist deal with the situation he's in. I think I might make this go full screen. Okay, so um, in terms of the scientific romance, I just wanted to point out a couple of ideas in terms of the setting. Um, in other works within this genre, uh, writers are forced to imagine a world in the future in which conditions are quite different of their own. Um, however, Orwell does not take this in a literal way. He actually um, looks at uh, a society that's not far away in terms of time uh, from the society of his time. So in only 30 years, uh, spanning from obviously 1948 in which it was written to 1984, um, he basically sets the narrative and he does that um, so that the conditions would be quite similar to a post-World War world in which he lived in. Uh, there were, uh, as you know, in the plot, there's um, pictures of uh, bomb sites. There's a notion of rationing as well. Um, and by doing this, um, he actually makes this world to be obviously quite plausible. Um, because it is set in a futuristic, it, even though it is futuristic, it is not very far away from the time that he lives in. Now, he also explores the lack of progress um, by the fact that all technical ingenuity has been challenged into developing even more sophisticated techniques of torture and more efficient means of warfare instead of investing in the welfare of his people. Now, the general quality of life has been neglected uh, if people are better fair, fed or house, of, of course, the party would think they would not be grateful uh, and they could start um, to cause trouble and rebel. Uh, they will become a lot more demanding about their life and about um, what they demand on the government itself. Now, in terms of the setting, uh, similarly to the dystopia, the scientific romance um, has a setting that is disturbing and alarming. Uh, in 1984, Winston is not uh, strange to the bleak, miserable world um, of the clogged drains, sour coffee, bad gin. Um, 
gray stew and cigarettes uh, that have to be held carefully, uh, otherwise the loose to tobacco will fall out. Uh, he accepts it, um, though he does have a feeling that life must have been better once. That continuous sense of misery depicted in that sordid realism, because obviously we're talking about uh, the early 20th century, uh, or mid, I should say, 20th century, um, is the norm that makes the atmosphere all the more striking for the reader. Now, the scientific romance is handled in a very realistic way to make the reader consider this kind of world that he has imagined in 1984 as a totally plausible and as a human possibility. He does this through placing Winston, whose values are more closely um, mirroring those that, of those people that live in 1948, uh, which was the, the time which uh, Orwell wrote this, um, in this future yet a realistic world. Now, if Win Winston had been engaged in time travel and appeared in a world of a novel in the same way that other novels in the degree in that genre do it, the reader really would feel that the world was somehow remote and uh, the potency of that political satire wouldn't obviously uh, take place. Now, I really would like you to focus on the notion of character in terms of this trope because apart from you know the setting and um, the realistic portrayal of that I really in terms of our um, module text on human experiences I really would like you to uh, think about how character is developed because this is crucial to how human experiences are explored in the text now the scientific romance usually concentrate on the reactions of the hero or as in Winston's case, the anti-hero, or the anti-hero, the romantic anti-hero, to the strange life which he finds he must deal with. This is also true of 1984, and Winston developing reactions to life in Airstrip 1 form the main interest of the novel. So we see everything, obviously, through his perspective. And um, it's quite important that we explore the development of his character. And from there, we can draw a lot of interpretations that will help us tackle some of the points in our rubric in, uh, of, of uh, text and human experiences. Now, uh, I'm sure that everything that I'm saying is not entirely new to you, but um, I would like you to understand that that is because uh, it is one of the critical elements that Orwell manipulates uh, within the genre of the scientific romance. Now, the love interest, a kindred spirit, in this case Julia, allows the protagonist to share the danger or excitement with somebody in the hostile world they live in. So this idea of the love interest is obviously central to uh, this genre. Although different from him, Julia is participant in the creation of a small world of, um, of love inside, sorry, there's a misspelling there, of love inside the blank and lifeless culture that surrounds them. Now, I have highlighted the word share there because that obviously has, uh, it's quite important if we're trying to link that to the rubric of text and human experiences. So their relationship, the relationship they share is, is one of uh, the key things you should explore in any of your essays. Okay, uh, Winston's development as a character depends to a large extent on his growing understanding of himself and his love affair with Julia. Um, now, that love affair with Julia stimulates that growth of self-realization. Now, that's why I say it is critical that we explore the relationship. It makes you a fuller, more complete, and in every way, even physically, a healthier person. This is obviously contrasted with Im images of imagination and decay uh, of him when he's tortured in the Ministry of Love later in the plot. So, that relationship that he shares with Julia um, makes him a better human being. And that is the whole point uh, that Orwell is trying to highlight to us. Okay, um, now in terms of the character, we must also look at the fact that uh, the interaction, let's say the interplay between that shared experience, that individual experience, and also society's constraints in 1984. So the work that Winston does 
as we know, is vital to the party's survival, to the government's survival, to that um, tyrannical system and its survival. And the reason that he feels different is because he holds views about human nature entirely contrary to the party's politics, views which most readers would share. Okay, so we're talking about readers in 1948 and hopefully also us, okay? Um, now, I also highlighted that because we can link that to the collective human experience. So that transcends time, okay? Through Winston's own assumptions about freedom, justice, individuality, okay, um, are being challenged against an intolerant political system one with no regards for tenderness, pity, or love. Now, that, that does not entirely make sense, but you know, sometimes I make mistakes like this. Um, what I wanted to say there is that Winston's own assumptions about freedom, justice, individuality are being challenged against the intolerant political system. Okay, now, uh, I've seen some papers in some um, of the selective high schools this year, uh, that had that actually particular question posed in paper one section two that was how are assumptions explored in your text so here this could be a way of tackling that question is that the main character's assumptions about freedom justice individuality etc are being challenged when he's facing um, his everyday life uh, in Oceania and also particularly uh, at the height of the climax when he encounters um, uh, torture uh, in the Ministry of Love. Okay, um, at the end of this uh, slideshow, I actually included uh, a bit of a snapshot of, of the contrast between his own assumptions, his own ideas, and O'Brien's ideas. Okay, and the system. Obviously, he shares that with the system. Okay, so Winston is a romantic hero and the main structural force of the novel. He's outside society, and though he is what most people consider normal, is made acceptable at the end, but at a terrible human cost. What I mean by acceptable there is acceptable in terms of the expectations of uh, the party. Now, he's made acceptable to survive, but the human cost is terrible. He has completely betrayed his humanity, okay, uh, by the end of the text. Engaging in thought crime, as Winton writes in his diary, does not entail death, but is death, which is deciding to have a life outside party control, which is by definition non-existent. So he actually uh, writes that in his diary, saying, well, my decision of writing in my diary is equals death, um, because I cannot have, um, um, let's say, independent thought and write my own diary and write about my experiences or my memories or my feelings because that does not exist because that is a constitutes an act, an act of uh, complete rebellion uh, against the party okay and a life such as that is non-existent that's why uh, we see multiple purges throughout the text okay and um, he, uh, even though at the end of the text we see that he loves B Big Brother, uh, we know that his uh, ending, uh, the end of his life, his physical life, let's say, uh, is imminent. Okay, now tropes. Uh, let's go to themes. Um, I said themes, so there are a couple of ideas. It could also be, this could also be labeled perspective, perhaps. In other works within the genre, the emphasis is on logic and rationality. So if we were to read um, other um, short stories, um, the emphasis is normally on logic and uh, rationality. But in 1984, there is also a tampering with brains in order to annihilate ordinary common sense. The party thrives on hysterical emotion, which is encouraged daily through the hate speech. It also aims to erode logical continuity so that it can alter the past at will. The party also thrives on contradiction and nonsense as is shown by its slogans, war is peace, freedom and slavery, ignorance is true. Now Winston realizes that its basic tenet is two plus two equals five, if need be, or 